This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is another 75-year-old man with a hypermature brown cataract and the he has very deep set eyes and as well the horizontal white to white diameter is also very less looks like the eyeball is slightly smaller and we done a specular microscopy which shows around 2100 cell density and the antechamber depth is around 3 mm it's not very shallow that's something which is quite nice about this gentleman uh, the anesthesia in this patient is posterior subtenens I'm planning scleral incision in this patient purely because if the need arises to convert to a CCS I can use the same incision that was the reason why I performed a scleral corneal incision in this patient I'm really worried about how the zonular health will be and I'm very anxious to know how the capsule behaves once I puncture it and thankfully it looks like the zonules are quite healthy and the rexis could be done very easily So there's no evidence while doing the rexis that the zonules were compromised they looked in good health gentle hydrodissection using very little fluid is done in multiple quadrants to ensure that the cortical capsule attachments are released nucleus rotation confirms the same time to emulsify the nucleus After initially aspirating the overlying cortex and the epineucleus I switch on to the sculpt mode wherein I am using 90% torsional energy to make a central deep trench please note my second instrument is stabilizing the nucleus as I'm trying to create a deep trench in the central part of the nucleus Now because this is a deep set eye there is going to be some pooling of fluid and uh, my assistant is using the suction machine to aspirate out some of the fluid as you can see while sculpting you can see a glimpse of the fluid which is being there so it's important that we address these basic issues as well that whether my visibility is good or not is just not about focusing on the step so you need to ensure that the atmosphere which is there is conducive and i should be able to see well so it's important that we take all the necessary precautions which help us to see well and if you we can see well we can do well once i have achieved around 80% depth i switch on to the chop mode and using only burst longitudinal mode of phaco energy i'm burying my phaco tip in the core of the nucleus so that i get a very good creep and a vertical chop followed by lateral separation is performed to divide the nucleus The central part of posterior plate is still holding on but it's all right. I'm trying to place my instrument deep into the groove and try to lateral separate but the little bit of a central plate is still holding on. So the nucleus is rotated and I'm beginning to chop and divide the heminucleus. The first small piece could be divided quite easily. Please note that the heavy nucleus could be chopped relatively easier because the tip could be buried quite deep inside. The lateral separation was very effective because both the instruments were kept quite deep inside the groove. Although the nucleus looks very hard it is a sort of a little bit brittle so the secret to achieve chop in these slightly harder cataracts is if we can catch them in the central core and then use a sharp chopper to go down vertically in couple of attempts of lateral separation we can divide these dense nucleus quite easily of course this nucleus wasn't so very hard as some of the previous cases but again the secret to achieve a good chop is always to get a good grip in the central core of the nucleus time to deal with the quadrants as i was saying the eye was very small the horizontal white to white diameter is very small and there's a lot of crowding in the eye 
in the anterior segment. So I don't want the emulsification to happen very much near the anterior chamber. So I'm trying to ensure that it, the emulsification is being done at the level of the iris. Now please note the position of the bevel. The bevel is facing slightly downwards and towards my left. And my chopper in the left hand is ensuring that none of the fragments are jutting out and flying away. Again, the judicious delivery of the power is going to decide how much lens chatter we are going to have. So that is controlled by your foot pedal because the power is set linearly. Time to replenish the OVD. Again, a dispersive OVD goes in first, followed by HPMC underneath it. The single most important reason for trauma to the endothelium is the lens fragments which are going to jump up and hit the cornea. I think the mechanical trauma plays a significant role. So we need to control it by using adequate amount of power, minimize lens chatter and also use a second instrument to prevent the fragments from flying away. Time to deal with the last two pieces and they'll come out into the anterior chamber. Again, I put the OVD in front of them and push both these fragments back into the bag. And similarly, in a very controlled manner, the last two fragments are emulsified. There's a lot of phobia among the younger colleagues that, you know, it's very challenging for hard cataracts. I agree, it is challenging. But if you can follow some basic principles like using the right amount of power to minimize lens chatter, doing the emulsification in a much more posterior plane, and of course using lots of OVD, you'll be surprised that, you know, you can get clear corneas in the first post-op day as well. So at the end of the surgery, you can see a lot of corneal hydration which has happened. And this is not wound burn or anything, it's just corneal hydration. And we'll see how it behaves in the next day. So at the end of the phaco emulsification, you can see that this is the total amount of energy which was consumed during the emulsification process. So this is a first day picture. There is very minimal corneal edema. The patient has excellent vision and is very happy. And we're going to repeat the specular microscopy after maybe one month. And this is how the specular microscopy results are. So it's down by 100 cells and that should be all right. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.